The Shanghai Tower is a skyscraper located in Shanghai, China. It is the world's second tallest building after the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Shanghai has a humid subtropical climate with four distinct seasons. The wind flows predominantly from the east and southeast direction at the speed of 11.2 miles per hour. The project is designed by Gensler and constructed by the Shanghai Construction Group (SCG). The construction of the tower started in 2008 and was completed in 2015. It is 632 meters tall and comprises of 128 floors. The tower functions as a self-sustaining vertical city. It is a mixed-use building of unique vertically interconnected neighborhoods that evolve as the tower slowly rises towards the sky. The tower's form can be broken down into three key components used to tackle the typhoon force winds of Shanghai. 1. Horizontal profile. The profile shape is based on an equilateral triangle. Two tangential curves offset at 60 degrees are used to create a smooth shape. The curved edges increase the tower's resistance to wind. 2. Vertical profile. From a functional point of view, it is important to maintain a wide footprint for the lower third of the tower with a slender footprint at the upper third, a reduction of about 55% overall to reduce swaying due to wind loads. 3. Rate of twist. The rotation angle between the base and the top of the tower is 120 degrees. The foundation of the tower is a piled raft type foundation made of a 6 meter deep raft slab supported by piles. The piles are 56 meters deep in the core area and 52 meters deep in the extension area. They are arranged in a staggered pattern in the load concentrated areas and in an orthogonal pattern in other areas. The core of Shanghai Tower is made of a 30 square meters concrete core. It is divided into nine smaller cores for vertical transportation, each serving a particular set of floors. The tower has 149 elevators, including three high-speed models capable of traveling 1,080 meters per minute. At the time of installation, they were the world's fastest single-deck elevators and double-deck elevators. The concrete core also interacts with the surrounding mega columns through the two-story deep outrigger trusses. The system is connected by belt trusses that take the lateral loads on the building. The one-story deep radial trusses are placed to support all the mechanical floors. The lateral load resisting system is comprised of 1 interior reinforced concrete core, 2 exterior composite super columns, 3 steel outrigger and belt trusses This diagram shows the lateral load transfer path The wind loads reach to the surface of the building and are transferred to the super columns thus the mega frame could carry larger part of the lateral forces In the reinforcement level part of the wind load will be horizontally transferred through the outriggers to the concrete core and then transferred to the foundation vertically The load of the building is transferred through two main structural components which is the mega frame and the tube core. The belt truss transfers the gravity load to the super columns and corner columns. In addition, radial trusses are arranged to bear the vertical loads produced by mechanical floors. This diagram shows the combined effect of lateral and gravity load transfer. In the cantilever end of the radial truss There are cables hanging the exterior curtain wall of each zone below. The building resists lateral loads through three layers of structure. The super core is the first layer of resistance. The double belt truss and super column are the second layer of resistance. The outriggers and radial trusses are the third layer. This diagram shows the multi-frame analysis of the tower. The first image shows shear analysis. The second shows the moment analysis. The third shows tension analysis and the fourth shows the structural member deflection the building uses a double curtain wall system as a passive design strategy to reduce indoor cooling loads 
The interior curtain wall is constructed along the edges of the central circular building. The exterior curtain wall is laterally supported by radial struts and ring beam framework on all floors. The gravity load of the exterior curtain wall is supported by steel hanger rods suspended from the mechanical floor above. Curtain walls of consecutive floors are staggered with a tapering form. Glass panels of various sizes are used to complete the exterior facade. The Gensler team selected two schemes for light pollution testing. One, staggered scheme and two, smooth scheme. The test was conducted for a 3 km radius area. Studies showed that the staggered scheme caused less light pollution than the smooth scheme, which is why it was taken ahead. At the top of the tower, a tuned mass damper designed to limit swaying at the top of the structure was the world's largest at the time of its installation. The tower faced problems attracting tenants due to the absence of all necessary permits from the local fire department and consequent impossibility to obtain the official occupancy permit. The tower's floor plate has an efficiency rate of only 50% on some floors, compared with 70% for a typical skyscraper, as the tower's outer skin, which is an effective sustainable strategy, takes up a lot of space. This is obvious in the absence of daylight when the top floors of the building are not lit up due to lack of occupants. The Shanghai Tower is a green skyscraper that uses multiple sustainable strategies. Some of them are 1. The glass facade reduces wind loads on the building by 24%. 2. The tower uses 25% less structural steel than a conventional design. 3. 270 vertical axis wind turbines located in the facade and near the top of the tower generate up to 3,50,000 kilowatt-hour of electricity per year. This covers 10% of the building's electrical needs. 4. The double-layered insulating glass facade is designed to reduce the need for indoor air conditioning and is composed of an advanced reinforced glass with high tolerance for temperature variations. 5. The building's heating and cooling systems use geothermal energy sources. 6. Rain and wastewater are recycled to flush toilets and irrigate the tower's green spaces. The tower has been awarded a China Green Building 3-star rating and a LEED Platinum certification from the US Green Building Council.